Hey everyone, let's go over the rear wheel drive conversion for a Lamborghini Gallardo, whether it's worth doing, how expensive it is, and the upsides and the downsides. Now I've done it to my Gallardo, I had it for about a year and a half or thereabouts before I did the conversion, or at least had a mechanic do the conversion anyway, and it's been one of the best modifications I've done for the car. Now basically, out of factory, the car comes four wheel drive. On paper, that sounds great, particularly if you're thinking about, say, race tracks and the like. The main problem with it out of factory is the all-wheel drive isn't super efficient and there's quite a decent amount of power loss when it's sending power to all four wheels. And part of the reason for this and part of the reason for the downside is the all-wheel drive isn't super smart is I guess the best way of putting it in that it's basically just done bluntly in terms of how much power is put to the wheels and basically this means that it can be quite inefficient and there isn't really major and a major advantage to having it being all-wheel drive. The plus side of this, of course, is that it's incredibly easy to convert to rear-wheel drive because by just removing effectively the ability to send powers to power to the front, uh, front wheels, you're going to effectively convert it to rear-wheel drive without any major downside or any major harm being done to the car. Furthermore, when you do this, it's incredibly easy to reverse because the system is quite naive or quite blunt in nature. All right, so that's the basic background to it. Now, the main downside that many people have with a factory Gallardo is it's quite jerky coming from a stop. So there's kind of this shudder when you're going from a dead standstill, which goes away once you're actually accelerating from, say, a rolling start. But from a dead standstill, it's really annoying. Now, for those of us driving in the city, that's incredibly infuriating because off a set of traffic lights, your car is going to be pretty slow when you have this jerkiness. So for practical uses for people in the city, the stock Yardo can actually be kind of annoying. And a dual clutch transmission would have made this a world better. At any rate, this is where the rear wheel drive comes in. Because it turns out that part of the reason for that jerkiness is the power loss and the inefficiency when one is effectively having it being all wheel drive. So if you do the conversion, some of that should, in theory, go away. Alright, so my experience with it is that it was very expensive. So I had it done with some additional stuff. So I had it done with uh, replacing the, uh, the steering wheel, or at least installing a new steering wheel. So all up, including the replacement, that cost me about $2,000 Australian. So if we're looking at the rear wheel drive conversion, we're looking at maybe slightly under $2,000 Australian. Because my cost for the steering wheel were just installing it. Alright, so if we're looking at just under 2000 Australian, is it worth it? Well, to do this, we need to consider the upsides and the downsides. The upsides are that it makes the car significantly more fun to drive. It feels much faster going from a dead stop. From a rolling start, it doesn't feel that much different in terms of acceleration and speed, but it does feel faster overall. Secondly, it reduces the amount of weight on the car. So it reduces it by around 120 pounds, give or take a little bit. Uh, and this is going to translate into kilos, about 60 kilograms or something similar. So it's a non, not insignificant amount of weight that you end up losing from the car. Now that of course would contribute to its speed to some extent, but of course it's still quite a weight saving. And you can struggle to get those weight savings with various other changes to the car, but this is a really simple way to get it. Another benefit of it is the car feels significantly more nimble. Now this is both when you're driving ordinarily and also when you're, say, dealing with parking lots and the like. So a common problem with the Gallardo is in parking lots, it's very annoying. You'll have to do like five point turns to get into parking spots. It's just a little bit irritating. Not insurmountable, but it kind of gets wearing. However, with the conversion, it's significantly easier to just maneuver around. You can feel this especially at speed, in fact, where the car feels significantly lighter, significantly more nimble, and therefore just a lot more fun to drive, i.e. the enjoyment factor goes up, even if it doesn't make that much of a change to handling, because there are advantages to all-wheel drive, it feels a lot more fun. So therefore, it's a lot more enjoyable. So you add the removal of the jerkiness, the better steering and the better acceleration, and it transforms the car. Other side benefits i found are that apparently it improves clutch wear. Now, uh, to be honest, I haven't really had that much experience with this. My clutch wear has been perfectly okay. I think I've gotten lucky with the clutch they have in the car. So I haven't found this to be a major benefit in my personal circumstances. 
but I've heard a lot of people remark this to be the case. I've found that it kind of makes the front bump lift a little bit better, but of course this might be just psychological, in that I feel as if the car lifts up a little bit more with the front bump lift. Now this could be partly because we've reduced weight, primarily from the front of the car, so it raises slightly higher, which makes it slightly easier to clear speed bumps and the like. So in any case, it feels like it's a lot more maneuverable in a daily setting. So we've got those as the major advantages, and that clutchway one can be a huge advantage, because let's face it, clutchway is a major problem with these Gallardos. So those would be my main top benefits of doing it, in addition to the fact that it's not expensive and makes it a decent mod. The question then is, are there any downsides that would offset some of these upsides? Now there's a couple of downsides I've found. The first major downside is, while the acceleration improves significantly from a dead stop, it actually, in fact, kind of loses traction sometimes. So the back wheels will sometimes come out, sometimes it feels as if there might be more torque steer, whatever the case might be, it feels as if the car isn't quite as stable from a dead stop. So you have to be incredibly careful when you're accelerating. This could be a major issue when you're actually driving the car. Another major problem that can sometimes arise is occasionally you need to deal with the fact that uh, the resale can be problematic. Another downside can be that you need to deal with problematic resale. So by problematic resale, I mean that sometimes people don't know the conversion. So for example, say you're selling the car to someone who doesn't really know about the conversion. So for example, someone who hasn't really driven Guiados before, doesn't really know as much about Lamborghinis. They're not really going to give you money for the conversion, and they might in fact decrease how much they're willing to pay because of the conversion. Basically, they think you've modified the car, and they need to modify it back, and they factor in the cost of doing this. So this can be an issue you need to consider if you're looking at selling the car quickly. Put differently, if you're going to sell the car, probably best to not do the conversion, because people won't give you money for it, it's probably going to depreciate the car uh, to a small extent. Always make sure that you have the parts that you took off when you did the conversion, because you will want to sell the car with those parts, because people will ask for them, and it will cost a fortune to buy those parts if you've gotten rid of them. Regardless, you're probably going to want to bear this in mind, and factor this in when you're selling it. So if you're looking at selling it imminently, I would probably suggest not doing the conversion, because you probably won't get value from it, and it might have actually make it more difficult to sell the car. So on balance, what do I think of the rear wheel drive conversion? I think it's incredibly useful, but I think you should mainly do it if you want to hold the car rather than sell it. I personally enjoy the car a lot more now that I've done the conversion, but you have to bear in mind that downside, that sometimes it feels like the back of the car is giving out when you're accelerating from a dead stop, and you also have to deal with what people are going to think when you're going to sell it, particularly the resale value or harm there too that might arise. So I hope this has given you a bit of an idea about the rear-wheel drive conversion for the Lamborghini, why I think it's worth doing, but some of the pluses and negatives that are associated with it if you were to go down that route. So once again, I hope the video has been useful or interesting to you. If it has, it would be great if you click the like and subscribe buttons, and if you have any other mods that you think would be useful for a Guiardo, drop those in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks once again, and I hope to see you next time.